Hello. In previous videos of this series, we mentioned multiple times that Flink is a distributed system. In this video, we will take a closer look at the components of a Flink cluster, their interactions, and also various deployment options. In Flink's terminology, there are two main high-level components of a cluster. A job manager, which acts as a coordinator, and task managers, which act as workers or executors. They are actually running your code. Job Manager submits the definition of a Flink job to Task Managers and oversees its execution. Job Manager and Task Managers are constantly exchanging heartbeat messages that help to detect components failures. Job Manager also coordinates the state snapshotting process. It periodically triggers checkpoints and registers them as successful only when all Task Managers complete their part. Consistent collection of all task managers' local states is called a snapshot. Let's now look at how computational resources are managed in a Flink cluster. In the simplest case, Flink's cluster resources are provisioned manually. You start a job manager process, and then you start task manager processes. Most commonly, one task manager is started per physical node but it depends a bit on the server size. For servers of very large size, it might be beneficial to run multiple task managers per node. Those task managers register themselves at the job manager and offer their computational capacity for executing Flink applications. Both job manager and task managers are GVM processes. When enough task managers are available to run your job with a desired level of parallelism, you can submit your application. The job manager then takes the sequence of commands in your program together with the configured level of parallelism and translates them into an execution graph. The execution graph represents slices of computations which can run in parallel. These parallel tasks can then be distributed to the individual task managers for execution. Static provisioning of resources can be a good starting point for experimenting with Flink, but it has some obvious downsides in production environments. In the recent years, there were a lot of advancements in cluster management systems that abstract resources provisioning and make it dynamic. Flink is well suited for this new approach, supporting integration with some of the most popular cluster resources management APIs, such as Yarn and Kubernetes. Flink actually has dedicated components for integration with such APIs called resource managers. In case of such integration, when a user submits a job, resource manager acts as a client and requests required resources. In response, Yarn or Kubernetes spawns containers with task manager processes. Only when enough task managers for the desired level of parallelism register themselves as the job manager, the job is getting deployed. Now, the next question that we're going to look into is, what is the relation between the life cycle of a Flink cluster and programs running on it? Here we're going to discuss various deployment models that Flink supports. The simplest one is the so-called session cluster. It is a long-lived cluster which executes multiple jobs. In this deployment mode, there is no isolation between resources. Task managers are shared. It is well suited for simple jobs with predictable behavior, for instance, simple SQL queries. The downside of a session cluster is that a misbehaving job can bring down the whole cluster, potentially impacting unrelated Flink deployments. It could also be challenging to ensure reliable security credentials isolation between the jobs. The second mode is called job cluster. The name speaks for itself. Each job gets an isolated cluster with reserved resources. Cluster's job manager is only overseeing execution of a single job and task manager processes are also wholly dedicated to executing a single jar. This is well suited for critical production jobs that require proper resources and circuits isolation. In Flink 111, there was one more mode added called application mode. Application mode is an optimization mainly for scenarios when you must submit a lot of jobs frequently. The main goal is to make the job submission process extra lightweight. 
We will leave it out of the scope of the discussion in this video. If you plan to run Flink in a large organization with hundreds of deployments, I encourage you to read up on the details in the Flink blog. The link will be in the description to this video. The last aspect that I would like to touch upon in this video is the question of high availability. Modern distributed systems are usually built on commodity hardware, where components failures must be treated as the normal part of system's lifecycle. As was just discussed, the job manager component participates in some critical procedures, such as checkpoints coordination. It is the only component which knows if the checkpoint that it initiated was successful. Not losing this information in case of a failure is critical for recovery, and therefore job manager represents a single point of failure. To address this issue and make your deployments robust, Flink supports high availability setups for the job manager component. It relies on external fault-tolerant services for maintaining configuration information and distributed synchronization. At the moment, there are two main options, using a Zookeeper cluster or Kubernetes-based setup based on config maps, which is available in Viverica platform, including its free community edition. Let's look how such setup works. Depending on the configuration, there might be multiple successful checkpoints located in the snapshot store at any given moment in time. There might also be multiple checkpoint barriers running through the system simultaneously. It is therefore critical for the active job manager to know at any moment in time which checkpoint was the latest successful one. In order to preserve this knowledge, job metadata is written into a fault-tolerant location, such as a Zookeeper cluster. If the active job manager fails, either a standby or a newly spawned backup will read this data and take over the oversight of the cluster. Operating and managing any distributed system is not an easy task and can require a lot of experience to get every aspect right. Viverica, original creators of Apache Flank, developed Viverica Platform to share their experience with the world. Viverica Platform has a community edition, which is permanently free. If you have an option to deploy the Kubernetes, I can highly recommend you to check it out because it can significantly simplify Flink's adoption for you. I would like to conclude this video with a short demo to give you the feeling of what it looks like and help you estimate if it's something that could be useful for you. Okay, uh, we are in a browser now and we're looking at the UI of uh, Viverica platform. Um, the core resource in Viverica platform is deployment. Um, deployment is an abstraction that is one level higher than just a normal Flink job that you would uh, be working with when running a standalone Flink cluster. It uh, basically ties the job and its desired configuration um, together with the management of the application state. Now, let's go ahead and create a deployment. As you can see, um, there are just a couple of things that need to be configured. I'm going to uh, paste them in here. So we need the name of the deployment. Uh, we need to specify uh, the um, URL where to find the packaged application or a jar. And we need to specify the main class that is going to be executed. Uh, also, we need to specify deployment target. Um, deployment target is basically a Kubernetes namespace where this job is going to be deployed. And uh, while we're at it, let's actually take a look at this um, namespace. Uh, as you can see, there's nothing running here at the moment. Uh, there's also this important parameter, parallelism. Um, parallelism defines how many executors or servers are going to execute your application in parallel. Uh, let's set it to four. Um, now, there's also an advanced tab that contains uh, um, much more fine granular um, settings, um, but we're not going to go into the details uh, in this demo. Um, now, if we click on create deployment, uh, what will happen is um, the platform is going to recognize that a new job um, has to be deployed. It will uh, communicate with um, Kubernetes to request um, required number of resources. So this will be one job master, a job manager, 
and for task managers or executors, um, corresponding to the level of uh, parallelism that we have uh, requested. And when all of those um, task managers initialize, they will register themselves at the job master and they will form a standalone application cluster that is uh, dedicated to running just this particular job. And as you can see in the background, the job has already transitioned into the running state. So we are live with this job now. Now, let's say you've been running it for a while and you see that your traffic increased and you need to have a larger processing capacity and higher throughput. Um, all you need to do to achieve that is go into the configuration of the deployment again and increase the parallelism. Let's say we put it to 8 and we save the changes. And what will happen now is the uh, platform is going to recognize the change in this um, configuration, basically discrepancy between the actual state of the application and the desired uh, settings that we specified. And what it's going to do is it's going to take a snapshot of the previously running application um, using the snapshots mechanisms, a mechanism that we've looked at um, uh, previously. And it is going to use this snapshot or state of the application um, and redistribute it among the newly acquired uh, resources. So we see that we increased the parallelism to eight, previously it was four. And so this state is going to be now redistributed among these uh, eight instances. And they all together will be running the application with double the processing capacity compared to the previous deployment. Um, so in a moment it will transition to a running state, but it, what I want to underline is that we basically have uh, performed a stateful um, upgrade and horizontally uh, scaled the application um, um, without doing much other than just um, changing one setting and clicking a save button. Um, this is how easy it um, is to run Flink applications and to operate them uh, using the Verica platform.